Yesterday, we took a look at the Ryzen 9 5900 XT and confirmed what 99.9% .9 of us already knew. It's a binned 5950X. Well, today, you're going to be super excited to learn that I also spent way too much money on the Ryzen 7 5800 XT, just to confirm that it's a binned 5800X. This isn't going to be a very long video. Uh, we're skipping the sponsor spot because probably going to be too short and instead we're just going to get into it. The 5800 XT is a 5800X, but with a 100 megahertz overclock to the boost clock, taking it from a peak of 4.7 gigahertz to 4.8 gigahertz. Why AMD is doing this four years after initially releasing the 5800X is hard to say. It doesn't really make sense, but then it's AMD, so I'm not sure it actually has to make sense. You do get a free Wraith Prism box cooler, which previously I don't believe came with any of the 5000 series processors. And last I recall, it was parts like the 3700X, 3800X, and 3900X that came with it. So maybe AMD realized they had a boatload of Prism coolers just sitting around and thought, let's make a 5800X T to move all of these things. Dunno, but it's the best theory I have for now. Anyway, you do get the Wraith Prism box cooler and you don't with the 5800X. It's been a long four year wait, but maybe it's worth it. Actually, hold that thought. It turns out AMD's asking $250 US for the 5800XT. How can that be? The 5800X, that currently costs just $180 US and has been available for less than $250 US for over a year now. So that means, in today's market, the 5800XT costs nearly 40% more than the 5800X for a 100 megahertz overclock to the boost. Worse still, it ends up costing the same amount as the 5700X3D. So who's going to buy the 5800XT? I know it's usually a nice thing to have lots of options to pick from, but this almost seems like a buyer's trap rather than another great AM4 option. Like the 5900XT though, the worst thing about the 5800XT, at least so far, has been AMD's marketing. AMD provided the tech press ahead of the Zen 5 announcement with some details surrounding these new AM4 processors, and the results were rather dubious. AMD claimed that the 5800XT would be as fast, or really faster, than Intel's Core i5-13600K for gaming. And that's pretty odd because the Raptor Lake CPU is much newer and as such competes quite well with Zen 4, not Zen 3. So how is a Zen 3 part matching a Raptor Lake part? Well, in reality, it isn't, not by a long shot, but AMD kind of fudged the results by heavily GPU limiting them as they used an entry-level GPU from a previous generation. Anyway, we talked about that in the 5900XT review yesterday, so I'm not going to go over all of those details again, but if you are confused as to why we're comparing the 5800XT with the 13600K, it's because AMD did. Anyway, before I pass any judgment, we should probably quickly consult a few benchmarks. So let's go do that. Just quickly, here's a look at how the 5800XT ran during the Cinebench all-core workload. We saw an average clock frequency of 4.5 gigahertz at a package power of 145 watts, and a peak operating temperature of 83 degrees. Then with just a single core active, we saw a peak of 4.95 gigahertz. Here we see that the 5800XT is 3% faster than the 5800X in Cinebench's multi-core test, scoring 893 points, which is a far cry from the 1,398 points produced by the Core i5-13600K, making the Intel processor a whopping 61% faster. And we see that the single core performance remains the same with 100 points, making the new 5800 XT 17% slower than the 13600K in this test, which does not bode well for gaming performance. When it comes to power usage, the 5800 XT isn't bad, reducing total system usage by 33%, though the Intel CPU was 61% faster, so not exactly a win for AMD here. The 5800 XT does stand up pretty well in Photoshop, though it is only 2.5% faster than the standard 5800X, and that meant it was 7% slower than the 13600K. We're also looking at a mere 2% improvement in the Premiere test for the 5800XT over the 5800X, making it 18% slower than the 13600K. 
Now for a quick look at a few of the 13 games that we've tested. Baldur's Gate 3 provided us with results that I think I can say were expected. The 5800XT was just 3% faster than the 5800X, and that meant the 13600K was almost 50% faster. Bit of a brutal beat down there for the old Zen 3 architecture. The Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty results were also pretty devastating. Here the Core i5 processor was nearly 40% faster, rendering 158 FPS, opposed to just 116 FPS. Again, the 5800 XT was just 3% faster than the 5800X. And the last game that we're going to bother looking at the individual results for is The Last of Us Part 1. And here the 5800 XT allowed for 132 FPS, which is a mere 2% boost over the 5800X. And this meant that the Core i5 13600K was 31% faster, managing a much more impressive 173 FPS. Finally, here's a look at our 13 game average, and despite AMD claiming that the 5800XT should be a few percent faster than the 13600K, it's actually the 13600K that wins here, and by a 33% margin on average. This makes sense though, as the 13600K competes more directly with the newer Ryzen 5 7600X and Ryzen 7 7700X processors, so it would be odd if a CPU using a previous generation architecture was able to deliver better performance. So there you have it, the 5800XT, it's probably the least exciting AM4 CPU to be released in the last few years. That's mostly because of the release price, which is really bad. There is simply no way you should or would entertain this thing at $250, even if you're already on the AM4 platform, just makes no sense. And that's because for $180, you can get the 5800X, or for $170, the 5700X, or if you're a gamer, the 5700X 3D at $230 probably makes the most sense. Of course, if you're not already invested in the AM4 platform, so you're either executing a complete platform upgrade or just building a new PC, the Ryzen 5 7600 at $190 US is the go-to option right now, at least in this price range. Of course, you can spend a little bit more and secure the Ryzen 7 7700 for $290, and that part was 30% faster in our gaming tests. As for Intel's Core i5-13600K, as I said in the 5900XT review, we cannot recommend Intel processors right now due to the ongoing stability concerns. But if I had my choice between a $250 5800XT and the 13600K for $260, I'd be picking the Intel CPU every day of the week. It's just a better product, assuming no stability issues of course. Thankfully, I don't have to make that difficult choice, and realistically, I would just get the Ryzen 5 7600 or Ryzen 7 7700 anyway. But it is funny to think that AMD was trying to convince everyone that this thing is as fast as a Core i5 13600K, and in terms of gaming performance as well, certainly not the case. So in a nutshell, the 5800 XT really makes no sense. And even if it was priced at $180, I'm still not sure why you would buy it. I think at that price, could at least make a case for it. And yeah, that is going to do it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed this series of XT reviews. I know the uh, products didn't exactly make for exciting reviews, but we've covered them anyway. We've cleared the air on those um, bad benchmarks from AMD. If you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, subscribe for more content. We also have Float Plane Patreon. So up to either one of those, you'll get access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, Q and A stuff, and behind the scenes content. But if not, that's perfectly fine, and I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.